1922, a woman who'd been committed to a mental asylum in Berlin for two years declared she was the lost princess of Russia, the Grand Duchess Anastasia. This led to 63 years of people supporting her financially as well as legally as she fought for her supposed right to her share of the $45 billion family fortune. She kept up this act until her death, using the alias Anna Anderson, Anna as in short for Anastasia. However, in 1991, she was proven through DNA evidence not to be Princess Anastasia, and her true identity was revealed. So, who truly was the lady Anna Anderson, and how did she end up in a situation where people actually believed she was the lost princess of Russia? If you're new to my channel, I discuss one interesting person per video and release new videos every Sunday, so please like and subscribe for more. So we can understand how the woman who called herself Anna Anderson could be believed by some to be a lost Russian princess, let's head back in time to Russia in 1917. At the time, the Russian royal family, the Romanovs, were still in power, and their family had been in power for over 300 years. However, in 1917, Russia was still in the grips of World War I, and it was causing significant social and economic issues. They were losing battles in humongous numbers, inflation and lack of accessible food was causing many to become distressed, and alongside this, the Tsar and Tsarina were very unpopular anyway. In the end, 200,000 people protested against the Tsar and the royal family ended up abdicating and being put under house arrest in Siberia. Then, on the 16th of July 1918, after roughly a year under house arrest, the Tsar, Tsarina and their five children were told to pose for a family photograph. Only, they weren't posing for a photo. Instead, the Russian government had ordered their execution. So while they posed as a family to get their photo taken, a group of armed men burst through the door, firing at them, killing them all. Now, this is where a very popular story emerged, that the youngest daughter, Anastasia, had managed to escape the execution. This led to an international media frenzy, and many people claiming to be her, the most famous and believed being Anna Anderson. In Berlin, on a cold, wintry day in 1920, a policeman saved a suicidal woman from a freezing canal. She claimed she didn't remember who she was and was admitted to a mental asylum, where she stayed for two years. When the woman arrived at the hospital, the nurses were shocked when they discovered that she was covered in scars from her head down to her back. Alongside her not remembering who she was, this made her a very mysterious and interesting person to others, which may have helped her in spreading her story that she would later come up with. Then, in 1922, after reading an article on Princess Anastasia, she told a nurse working at the hospital that she remembered who she was and she was the missing princess. Eventually, this got out and people came flocking to see her, and as she claimed she'd lost her memory, they were each telling her snippets of information about the princess and her life in order to help jog her memory. In the end, all this sharing of private information about Anastasia and royal life helped her convince more and more people that she was the princess because she knew details that they thought she otherwise wouldn't have known. Despite all this information she knew, one fact I find bizarre was that she refused to speak Russian and apparently couldn't read or write it either. Now, this should have been her mother tongue, so to me this is very strange that people still believe she could be Anastasia. So over time, more and more people who had known the real Anastasia met the lady claiming to be her, and they all became increasingly divided, with some believing she was her and others very sure that she was an imposter. Her explanation as to how she ended up from the execution room to the canal was an astonishing story. She claimed she was rescued by a guard, 
and that they ran away together, fell in love, got married, had a son together, and then her husband died and she put her son in an orphanage and attempted to go to Berlin to find her grandmother and when she couldn't find her she was distraught and threw herself off of a bridge into the canal where she was saved. She then lost her memory for two years due to all the trauma and that's how she ended up in this situation. With this story floating around, she was soon released from the mental hospital and given a home as someone who believed she truly was Anastasia. This started the trend throughout her life of reliance on others to finance her lifestyle. She ended up initially staying in Germany and was eventually issued with temporary identification documents by the German government that identified her as Anastasia and contained personal details of the princess like her date of birth. At this point, she started calling herself Anna, as in short for Anastasia. Now, by this point, Princess Anastasia's real-life uncle was incredibly suspicious of Anna and was sure she wasn't the real Anastasia. So in 1927, five years after she initially claimed to be Anastasia, he hired private investigators to find out who Anna truly was. The investigators managed to actually find out her true identity, a Polish factory worker called Franziska. This led to 12 of the most closely related family members to Princess Anastasia signing an affirmation that they knew Anna was an imposter. And so, you'd probably think this would be the end of the story of her pretending to be the princess, but she refused to accept that she was Franziska and went on for a further 50 odd years claiming to be Anastasia. She ended up moving to America, probably to try and get a fresh start, where she instead ended up earning a reputation among the New York elite for being mentally unstable. For example, she was caught running around naked on a roof, she threw a lot of temper tantrums, and apparently even killed her pet parakeet. This resulted in her, once again, being submitted to a mental hospital before being deported back to Germany, where she was taken under the wing of supporters once again. I think at this point, it would be good to mention that it is debatable as to whether Anna truly was pretending to be Anastasia, or whether it was mental illness causing her to not remember who she actually was, as she did truly suffer from mental illness. There are even reports that it was other patients within the initial mental asylum she was in that told her that she was the Russian princess. Either way, she continued to say she was Princess Anastasia, and in 1938, she took the next step by opening a lawsuit in order to gain access to the lucrative Romanov fortune, which is estimated to be worth $45 billion. This lawsuit went on for decades and is apparently Germany's longest case ever as it wasn't dismissed until 1970 when the Supreme Court declared that she just didn't have enough proof that she actually was the princess. She continued on as she had, living in other people's houses, pretending to be Anastasia, and fighting the lawsuit until 1968, when she was found semi-conscious in her house. While she was hospitalised, it was discovered that she'd been living in awful conditions. She had 60 cats, and a dog, and of course this meant her house was a huge unsanitary mess, as I'm sure you can imagine from having that many animals in your home. All 60 of her cats and her dog had to be put down, to which Anna was apparently horrified and ended up moving back to America. As her American tourist visa was about to expire though, she ended up marrying a man who was paying for her trip, called Jack Manahan. Something I find quite interesting is that he was actually a history professor and a genealogist, which for how her whole life was surrounded around her supposed genealogy and history, I feel it's quite fitting to have that sort of interest in common. In her final years, she suffered with an intestinal tumour and ended up being hospitalised for it. She later went on to have a stroke and caught pneumonia and died on the 18th of June 1984. Apparently she was cremated the same day she died, which is something I've heard many found suspicious as they think maybe she did it to try and prevent any DNA testing being done. But I mean, cremation is a very popular thing to do, so I'm not sure that holds much weight, but it is interesting. So, with her dying still declaring that she was Princess Anastasia, and that she was cremated so we can't test her DNA through exhuming the bones or something like that, how do we know that she definitely wasn't Anastasia? Well, 
Apparently, a sample from her intestine from when she had the tumour removed was preserved. So, when DNA technology improved greatly, they were able to test her DNA against Romanov DNA and DNA of siblings of Franziska, who the private investigators were sure she was, and results showed she indeed wasn't related to the Romanovs and she was related to the siblings of Franziska. On top of this, the graves of the Tsar and his children were all found, so there actually was no missing princess after all. So, in truth, she was Franziska, a Polish lady who'd been working in a munitions factory during World War I. Before she ended up in the canal, she had a series of unfortunate events happen to her though, as her fiancé was killed as a soldier in the war, and a grenade exploded in the factory she was working at, killing another employee in front of her eyes and causing the scarring on her head and back. She suffered with mental illness and had already been in mental hospitals prior to her stay in 1920. So that's her interesting life story. Thank you for watching. What did you find the most interesting about Anna's life? I hope you enjoyed this week's video. See you next Sunday on 1 in 7 billion where we will discuss another interesting person.